Welcome back to the channel, I'm DJ, and this is another video in our Behringer Wing tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be covering the effects that we have inside the console, so let's get started. So on the wing, we have 16 effect slots. Eight of these are our premium effects, and eight of them are the standard effects. Now the difference between the two is that our premium ones are some effects like reverbs, some delays, some choruses, and some pitch effects. And then our standard effects are graphic EQs, a combinator, precision limiter, deesser, some enhancers and exciters, as well as some amp simulators as well, and then some more of the model EQs. So the example that I'm going to use, I'm going to be setting up a vocal verb and a vocal delay. So to start, let's go ahead and just select our bus 13, which I've already got named as vocal verb, then hit the view button. In this, what we're going to do is we're going to change the bus from a pre-fader to a post-fader. So just go ahead and tap that second box down there, select post-fader, and do the same for bus 14. Now what we're going to do is go to the post-fader insert on bus 13 and 14. Go ahead and tap that, turn it on with the on button, and then hit effects processor. We'll use processor number one, and then we can go over to type, and I'm just gonna select hall reverb for 13 for the vocal verb. For bus 14, do the same thing. Go to the post fader insert, turn it on, go to the effects processor, and we'll use number two. And then select the effects type, and I'll do the ultra tap delay. Now with the effects on the post fade insert, we have the controls on the encoders along the bottom of the touch screen. So for the ultra tap delay, we have time, pre-delay, repeats, width, diffusion, slope, and then over here, this button is gonna be our tap tempo, so that can also be our time. Going back over to our vocal verb, we have pre-delay, size, decay, bass multiplier, dampening, and diffusion. And of course, these controls will change with whatever effect that you put on the insert. Now that we have our effects set on our buses, what we need to do is set up our effects return. Now the X32 and M32, they already have a page for effects returns, but on this console we actually have to select a channel that we want to use as our effects return. So what we're going to do is go to routing, go to our channels and then unlock. Then I'm going to use aux in 7 and 8 to be my effects return. So I'm going to hit the source group and then hit bus. Then aux 7, I'm going to make sure I do source to channel to keep that. Vox verb and vox delay. Now if you look over here in our aux ends, we see vox verb and delay. Now we have our bus sending out post fade with the effect to a separate channel. Now the difference between these two, if you pull the channel fader out really fast, you won't hear any of that effect continuing. But if you pull out the bus fader, then that effect will finish before it stops doing the effect anymore. Now just like in the DCA and bus video, to send channels to a bus, all we're going to do is select it, hit sends on fader, and then send whatever channels that we want to to that bus. Now putting effects on the bus isn't the only way to use the effects rack. We can actually put the effects rack on any channel in the console. One example, let's go ahead and go to our Guitar One DI. Let's hit the pre-fader insert, turn it on, and then let's select the regular effects processor, so effects 9. Then our effects type, let's go ahead and use this rack amp just to simulate an amp effect coming from that DI. Another thing you can do, if you have any outboard gear that you actually want to use with the console, we can use this external right here. Now selecting this, we have the option to do mono, a stereo, or a mid-side configuration as well. But when we use this, what we're going to have to do is go to our routing page. We have to send out the effects send signal, and then we also have to bring it back into the console. Now to get the effects send out of the console, we're going to come over here to outputs. I'm going to use the local outs and then come over here to source group and make sure you have effects send selected. So I'll put this external effect on effects processor 10. So we're going to use channel 1 as 10 left and channel 2 is 10 right. Then we can come back to that channel, go back to that pre-fader insert, and then we're going to click return. Now I'm going to use the local ends to bring that signal back in. So go ahead and click local in 1, make sure it's stereo since that's what we're sending out, and then click done. Now we brought that return back in, so now it's just functioning like a regular insert. 
Now it doesn't have to be stereo. That's just what I set it up as for the example. So like I said, you can do mono, stereo, or mid-side. That's gonna be it for this video. If you haven't seen some of the others, I'll have the playlist linked down below. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.